Oh, Welcome yeah. back to our little chats. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the feedback that you've been giving us. We, we really yeah. enjoy getting the feedback from you and that you're loving it, you're liking our stuff. So today we've got another interesting story to share with you. So this is about a healing session that June did with me. And this is um, that introducing a psychic surgeon. So I'm going to start at the beginning, how it all came about, and we'll just follow through with the story so that you get to know how it unfolded. So how it started was um, June approached me, I think it was about three or four years ago, was it June? I can't think. Yeah, and it must have been uh, just on the end of lockdown. Was it? I was still here. Yeah. Um, to, to pop down and do some healing on Carl because he's a bit like the Scarlet Pimpernel. Every time he realises someone's been like instigated to come down and do a bit <laughs> of healing on him, he disappears. So he's like he gets wind of it, but he's probably got this like psychic -y stuff going on himself. Yeah. So yeah. He sort of picks up on it and then he does a disappearing act. So like June said to me, like, do you think that you'd be able to do it? So I said, oh, I check in with my guides. And so I had a little chat with them and they said, yes, I will be able to do it. So we arranged for me to come down and I stayed at June's. And um, yeah, I was I down for about three or four days? Did I come down? Yeah, the whole weekend, wasn't it? Yeah. And we were showing you the sites as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All around different places. Yeah. And uh, Carl was there. Um, Anyway, I, we, I sort of talked him into having it done. So it's really funny. We had to sort of bribe him. And I was saying to him, like, I'm practicing. So, like, Adam all laying out. So June was laying out, <laughs> Charlie and Carl. Carl wasn't quite into it, but he sort of willingly sort of went along with it, put all the crystals on them. And um, I was doing shamanic, wasn't I? Yeah, at that you point. were. Doing some shamanic. So I was doing the three of them. But, um, Carl was resisting a bit because he kept on opening his eyes and looking at me and he's like as if to say can I get up now and I'm going to him no you can't like 10 minutes like trying to whisper so I didn't disturb <laughs> you and Charlie while well, you used to was like oh, loving it laying out like that and he couldn't wait to get up so as soon as I like finished like he was up blanket come off crystals went everywhere and he disappeared so we thought well we did a bit but we probably need to do it again. So I don't know if it was the next day we did it again, was it? Yeah, I think it was the next day. I think it was the next day. So I managed to do it, I remember now, I managed to do a little card reading with him. I remember I did yeah. the, um, like the star seed ones with yeah. him. So he does have that galactic line because I did it. Do you remember I left them out on the yeah. table so you could yeah. look at them? And uh, anyway, I said to Carl, like, can you help me out again? Because I've got to practice. I haven't had enough practice. So like, can you all just like lay down again so I can do it? And he's like looking at me as if to go like, really? I'm going, you really do me a favor. I was really laying it on a bit for him so like, to try and get him to feel bad. So we do it. Yeah. Anyway, he agreed to it. And so there we got three of them laying out again, doing it. And we're doing the shamanic again. And that, when I was sitting behind Carl, I heard like my guide say that um, I need to like put my hands on his head. So I sort of just whispered to him, I said, can I just put my hands on my head? And he said, yes, yeah. so I put my hands on his head. And I was doing like, a little bit of healing with him and all that. He was quite chilled that time. He and was. He did he, do it. Yeah, he completely went through it. He didn't like try and get up or anything. No. It was good. Anyway, that was all over. That was good. And then we all got up, didn't we? And uh, yeah on about our day our dinner and all sorts of things but anyway later that night when I've gone to bed I couldn't really relax I couldn't get to sleep I, every time I closed my eyes all these like figures kept coming at me all the time and I kept trying to clear them and asking them to leave and all of that but it just wasn't working so in the next morning I, I said to June that um I think you're going to have to help me clear here. I think I've got some attachments or something because he's been going on all night, all these faces coming at me. So Jean went, oh, well, that's all right. We'll do some healing on you and carted me off over to your cabin. <laughs> you're sitting in there to do some healing. So then you started getting everything ready, didn't you, for me? Yeah. So do you want to say like what you were doing while I was... Well, um, I thinking. do something called a Nusha healing and there's cards that come with that healing and because I don't read those cards I always lay them out under the bed or the angels tell me which ones to pick 
because there's 47 in the pack and they always correspond to the chakras so they pick the cards they pick the crystals and it all gets laid out under the bed and mostly that i can see where there's a problem by looking at the line of the way the cards have come out or and they weirdly they move the chakra that needs to be attended to so i i do notice all that it's all out under the bed crystals on the bed and um so Tracy's come over like and it is lovely in here it's a lovely atmosphere and it? it's all mm, yeah lovely anyway she's laid down on the bed and the first thing she said to me because everybody comes in here and sort of melts with the energy and Tracy I've never had anybody say this to me um she's got on the bed she went I'm not going to sleep you know I'm <laughs> gonna ask questions all the way around I went do what you like <laughs> I don't know if they're going to like, do, mate. When I walked in, I see all these cards. I was like, what the hell is going on here? There's all these like, <laughs> loads of them, weren't there? You put, you put loads of cards there. And she went to me, so I've got a big job. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I get on the bed then, shall I? <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, you know, what? you know, I'm not going to ask that. I thought, you yeah. know, do what you like. I don't care. You can talk to who you like. I'll just be on my own little world doing what I do. And <laughs> I don't call Dr. B. He's called Dr. B, my psychic surgeon. I never call him in. I, by the time I've got down one side of the bed, he sort of meets me at the end, if he's going to be there. And I'm, I'm quite used to him doing that. So it, it, I don't think that it's any different with that, you know, not for anybody. And I, I just thought, oh, you'll be talking to whoever in here, and that'll be fine. It don't matter. I'm, I'm going to be off doing whatever. Yeah. So, <laughs> no, I did get to your stomach, and and it was this side, because I've gone down that side, come around here, going to do the calls. And he was obviously there helping me do the calls. Mm. And it felt like pulling out rope. At one stage, there's not many aliens that I remember. Not, you know, you could ask me next week, what did you say? And I go, I don't even remember you being in here. Yeah, it's actually really don't stuff, yeah. But that, I'd, I'd never, ever felt. I had to wind the rope around my arm to mm. pull it out. And I, I, I'm used to put, like, cutting the and it isn't really cutting it's it's like it's just like a soothing thing for me when I, I cut the cords it's just to stop you being so attached to that person or let that person go on their own way or whatever that is but this was bloody rope yeah I yeah. could see it as rope and I don't always see the cords but this was monumental and I thought God, what am I, what's this all about? And straight away, Trace, I did think this was family stuff. The attachments from family. Mm. But it weren't just, I don't know what you thought. Well, it I thought it was like, just years of work and, you know, where you try and do the clearing on yourself. Yeah. And sometimes you get left with a bit of residual. But I had done, like cancer patients in Ireland I think that that took quite a toll on my body and I it stopped was. doing that because it was that and I think it was all that type of energy I stuck to me I, I didn't realize it was that at the time obviously no I just thought this this is family stuff mm. you know not I don't want to go into it but yeah. that's how it felt to me because it felt heavy yeah and I have never ever had to wrap it around the arm and pull it out Oh, yeah, and I remember I, laying obviously. there, and it was painful. That what if I didn't tell you, she didn't already know this, but I had a pain under it was by my solar plexus, and I just thought it was like um, like indigestion or maybe um, through my training and stuff that I had a like a little hernia or something there. It was very uncomfortable. Even like sometimes like I couldn't wear a bra because it pushed on it, and it was that uncomfortable. 
possible that as soon as like I mean a lot, a lot of us do that we get home and pull them off but um yeah it was really really uncomfortable and so like laying there and I could feel I, I just shut my eyes I just lay in there just shut my eyes and I could feel all this being pulled out of me and I was like in my mind I've gone bloody hell you need anesthetic for this it bloody hurts and then a voice went just breathe <laughs> in my ear so I thought oh my god somebody's here <laughs> so I tried to talk to him and he won't have it done a bit no, he, he, don't, don't to me. he don't really talk I don't I think he did talk to me yesterday for what he doesn't really talk to me I talk to oh. him I don't hear the answer or because I think he just knows what he's doing. I just yeah. assume he knows what he's doing. Let's put it that way. But no way was I prepared for that one, Trace. Mm -hmm. And then I got to your leg, didn't I? Yeah. And I didn't see that. I didn't, like, normally he's, I, I feel his glasses. I feel him put his glasses on me somehow. I don't know how that works, but. I go like this, and I think, oh, I ain't got my glasses on. What's all this about? It feels like I've got glasses on. And he makes me bend over and look. And I think I did that on your stomach. I look, he looks through my eyes. So yeah. I have to bend over. And then I, I was, this, then something happens. I'd, you know, like he's, he starts with his, he, he likes to do this. It's like a lot of stitching or pulling like fine things very fine yeah. work but that and I didn't know that was happening with your leg I, t I don't I perhaps I it's because it's all a bit of a blur now yeah but I probably did look in because I it's shown I'm getting it shown to me now it was a gash it wasn't just a little slit it was a gash on mm. your leg and that's when he he was here all the time actually. Yeah. But when we did your leg, he stitched it up, didn't he? Yeah. I remember I was laying there. Once he finished with my stomach and the relief, because it wasn't hurting anymore, and then he went round to my leg. Well, June didn't know about my leg. She knew I used to rub it. I used to have this habit of just rubbing it. Um, but that's a bit of a story. But first of all, anyway, I felt him round my leg, and then I felt this felt like someone was doing something on my leg, and I thought. Oh my god, he's stitching it up. And I was like, oh, I was so relieved to finally have it sorted out because I knew that this was a past life wound in my leg. And I was aware of it. And when I used to get tired or work too much, it used to really hurt. And I was always rubbing it and rubbing it and rubbing it. And wherever I was, people used to see me rubbing it as well. And I used to, have to go around with this crystal. I think it was a selenite, wasn't it? Yeah, it was Yeah. And you oh, were permanently doing it. Probably rubbing it. I just couldn't couldn't seem to heal it myself. Anyway, he come in and he fixed it. And I was so pleased about that. And then, um, so you left me there for a little while, didn't you? And I got up. And, and, oh, do you remember the shakes? Yeah. I was shaking, weren't I? My whole body was shaking. Like, it'd gone right into, like, my energy field, really deep into the layers to, to sew that leg up. Because um, what June didn't know is that I'd already done like past lives and I'd gone back to 10 recent ones. And this is something I do on like the angel board sometimes with ladies. So whenever I've done it before, I've done my own. So I've gone back to 10. So when I've then got home and had to look to see where it was on the 10th in this 10, it was number eight. And in that lifetime, I lived in Nottingham. I was a farmer, I was being robbed and I'd run out or run somewhere to try and stop them from robbing me and in the process I got shot in the leg and I was age 51 and because there was no one around I just bled to death so I always assumed that that was that wound in there from there and I'm trying to fix it and fix it um, but then what you said you saw something else as well didn't you? I saw you as a Roman soldier and you was, um, it was almost like a gladiator uniform. And this was a dagger. It wasn't a knife. It was a dagger. And it wasn't, you wasn't shot because I wouldn't have thought I had guns. I don't know. Anyway, 
So that, what he stitched up, was a gash from yeah. the and times. And it, it, that makes sense, because if you was fighting, you would have got yeah with a dagger. And I saw that as clear as anything. Hmm. After, not when it was happening, I yeah. saw it after. When we started sitting in here after, when you were shaking, and we asked, because uh, I didn't, I knew he was, I, I knew that I called him the doctor, and I, I knew he was a psychic surgeon, but I never had a name for him. Mm. And you said to me, that let's, let's ask. So I called him Dr. B now, because that's what we got, wasn't it? Yeah. That Dr. B. So I know when he's here, I know his name, but I know that whatever he comes to do, mm. is. It's major what he does. Yeah. It's absolutely spot on. And it is, it just turns up mm. like he did for you. Yeah. So that was just off the cuff, wasn't it? It wasn't yeah. pre arranged or no. hadn't no. talked about anything, no. doing it. We just, just one of them things, we just ended up on the bed and then I got fixed. So obviously there was two past lives. So we checked it out, didn't we, earlier? Yeah, we did. So that other one with the Roman, and that was in Colchester, wasn't it? That's what we got. Um, that was lifetime number 17 that that happened. Yes. So, yeah, so it's of the same leg in two lifetimes. So the wound yeah. was really deep in my, um, what do you call it? Not energy field, there's another word for it, isn't there? That um, when you go really deep into whatever. Yeah. Else, I can't and it forget. was deep, because yeah. afterwards, not at the time, but after I didn't look into that one. I looked in at the stomach. Mm. Afterwards, he showed me the length of the gash. Yeah. When when we were sitting here talking, I and I saw I saw you then as you was. Yeah. Uniform on, and that the it, it, the dagger. I saw it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's relief. The relief from not having that in my stomach. Still haven't got it now, completely gone. And the leg doesn't play up anymore. I think sometimes I rub it out of habit because I rubbed it for second long. Yeah. And I think that I got that when I checked about my one, I got it at um, age 51. So I felt that I had it from age 51 in this lifetime. Oh, right. The, like, the timing coincided. Yeah. So it, it yeah. seemed like I'd had it for a few years and yeah. constantly trying to heal it and clear it. And I, like when I used to do it, I just sort of energetically used to put my hand into my leg. Sounds really weird, but try to like massage it and clear it. I just couldn't do it myself. And I think that's like, I don't know if you say that to other healers, but you can't always heal yourself, can you? You oh. need somebody else yeah. to come it's, in and do it's stuff. So, it's so much more powerful when someone else does it for you. And it's like healing your own. Actually, I, for the first time this morning, I got Charlie to have healing. Oh, did you? Oh. And Dr. B turned up. Really? He did. But that would be another story. Yeah. But oh, wow. So interesting because he, you know, he just doesn't go along with it, really. And I, I've always thought... <laughs> did he willingly get on that bed then? Yeah, he did. <laughs> he, he'd, asked me a, he'd asked me a few times. But I, it was me. I wasn't feeling it. Yeah. I feel it. Uh, that morning I said to you, I must have been feeling it or being guided to say it. Yeah. But this morning was the right time because, mm -hmm. and it was real. It was that, and I know he was here because I, I know when he's doing that fine stitching. Oh. You know, like my fingers go funny and. Yeah. Oh, and I've got that thing with my glasses. I'm going like this. I've got my bloody glasses on because I can feel them. Mm. And because we sort of guessed who he was now, aren't we? But yeah. Is that another story? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's good news. Yes, Interesting to You can tell us next time how he is yes, after his I little. Will. <laughs> well, they're never little healings, are they? We don't do little jobs. Like you, I mean, I don't know if you're if these people on here swear it was when you sat up. <laughs> what the fuck was that? And the girl <laughs> said it to me on the other day. She sat yeah. up. What's that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
it is quite a shock because I yeah. don't, well, I can't warn them because I don't know yet that that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, you can't pre-decide what you're going to do, can you? No, nothing to do with me. Yeah, I just, I'm just. I mustn't say it's just the channel, but I am the channel. Yeah. Who comes in and does that stuff? Yeah. We, that's still using um, your energy as well. Yeah, we can't own it because yeah. we, you know, that's who we are. And if once you put, you start owning that stuff, it's your ego. Mm. Not it's yeah. to do with us. Yeah, we can't pre-decide what we're going to do for someone and sort it out. Um, no. it, it just sort of happens on the day, doesn't it, what it is, and you go in and, and, and do it. <laughs> that one, but after I've gone home, like with me, me new leg and I could breathe properly, a few days after that, I started getting this weird energy coming in, just like, remember, and I was saying, oh. Feel like I've been knocked over, like I've been getting a new guy. So they, they obviously decided that to put us together for you to clear that energy so I could get Zaki in, my my new well, she's fairly new, I ain't had her all my life, I don't think anyway, coming in to, to do what do now. But yeah. my energy wasn't clear enough. I couldn't get to that vibration to be able to do it. So it needed to be cleared for me to be able to I work with her is the only way I could explain it really but it took a while so the energy kept like knocking me sideways I, I, to get to that higher vibration to be able to work with her um Try obviously to... that needed clearing and that a funny feeling do you feel like you you're gonna fall over when you get that because I yeah, do I at I first yeah and like like if you I mean I don't drink but if you've had a lot, to, I can imagine if you have a lot to drink, you're, you're not actually around, you know, you're all over the shop. That's how it makes me feel with the energy sometimes. Yeah. Uh, me head spins and I, I don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't think people really get, you know, when you start working with the galactics, like how powerful it is. We were chatting earlier, weren't we, about yeah. it and the effects that it has. You know, and it, it takes a couple of days. It does me a couple of days to recalibrate after doing a big clearing session or yeah. healing session. And yeah. I feel like my whole body's on fire. <laughs> uh, I've only experienced that one night of channeling that galactic. And I don't know who that even was. I didn't ask. But I don't remember how I felt the next day. But maybe I, that's my stuff. I forget to check in with that. Yeah. But maybe, um, I do think the the energy was so different. I do know that. I know how I reacted when I went in the house after. Yeah. yeah. And I, I do not remember one bit of that at all. And the girls that was in here, mm -hmm. we should have recorded it. Because yeah. Because that might it don't happen again, that's a one off. And they Jack said to me, You was actually speaking like language in that. Mm. Well that and they lucky because I don't know I can even do it. Yeah, well do you know what? I think, you know, when we were talking earlier about um, starting our healing circle, um, I think he will be channeling the galactics back through. I think that's the whole point of us doing yeah. it now. It is. Yeah. Because, um the lady in America that talks to me all you know, she reads the Akashic, but become my friend. Yeah. The time. And um, it was her that wanted us to set up this little group we've got now with the Galactics. Yeah. And she said, June, you've got to open the portal. So all day that day, when I got that message, I thought, okay then. Where, where are we going to open? I was asking them all day, where am I going to open the portal? With? But they still, you know, they had me over there in, you know, there's all fields over there. Oh, and it didn't happen over there. I could see it over the sea. But it was so different to where I imagined it. I've got a lovely story about that portal. But mm. we'll, I think we'll save that for another time. Yeah, that was okay. Yeah, really, really a lovely so story. Are you, like, working with the Galactics now, then? Yeah, I think so. Because yeah. we we meet once a month, that those group of girls, and... That's what it's about. It's about the galactics. Mm. And one of the girls has actually 
we've all seen it. She's got a galactic guide, Bridget, and his name is Gaelic. Oh. And all I see, like, he's got long arms and legs, and he, and she fi actually feels him. I mean, yeah. she was the first one. Maybe I did have them, but, and I've seen them in here, but she was the first one. Oh, I see what you're saying. You're talking more about beings. Yeah. Yeah, like the, oh, what, what what would you say they were? That's, I expect he's a star being. Yeah. Do you, any particular, the, not a Syrian or... Um, no, I don't know. We don't know what they are. We're meeting next Tuesday, so, but he's definitely galactic, definitely. Mm. Like the energy of him. Yeah. And she, I mean, she was absolutely not sideways with it. Because, you know, once again, she wasn't ready sort of to add that. Yeah, but you don't know what it is when it starts no. happening. You've got to, well, I had to tune in to find out what there was going on. I yeah. didn't know that. So it's probably the same for them. They don't yeah, know it what and that it was how She couldn't, and the bless her, she, they came here for a group meeting one night. This was way before we did the galactic group meeting. And she just couldn't, she, she just could not shut up about it. And it sort of took over the evening. But I get why, because it's such a big deal. If yeah. you're, she don't, I mean, she's very spiritual, but she doesn't run groups. She don't do any of that stuff mm. other than come to me. And that it was just, well, it was amazing what she got. I can't, yeah. I'm seeing her next week and I'll get her to give me more information and we'll yeah. talk about it on here. Yeah, yeah that would be good. She, you know, it's just the way it happened. Yeah. And she, what I, where it started was, when we'd done meditation before that, she kept saying to me, I'm getting most code in my ear. And yes, the light was, language. Is, yeah. Yeah, because it does, yeah. He was giving her, and she went oh. on trying to see what that was. She was looking up the Morse code to see what the tapping was. So, you know, when I, I did the little light language demo for you the other day, and it is, it's yeah. different to some of the other ones, so I think each being has a different style of language. Definitely. It? And I mine was, and not that I'm going to do it, but you, do you remember it, how it was? It was a bit bitty, yeah. bit weren't it? Like, yeah. as Whatever about me and doing. That, my friend Donna really speaks it. Yeah. But no, you know what's what? really worrying? When she first did it to me, she don't she don't do it to show off, it just comes. Yeah, yeah. Well I was in stitches, I had my head on the table in stitches because I said this is really weird, no? Exactly, I, yeah. That's the whole reason why I said that. But I can understand it. Yeah. I can understand what she was saying. Like, this is bloody weird. Yeah, you know, like, it's bad enough hearing it, and as I was, there's me on the other end like this, I couldn't stop laughing because I said I understand what you're saying. To me. Yeah, so that what I did with you, that was an Archerian. Yeah, see, she's different. Uh, I don't know what hers is, but it's I think they've all got a different language that they yeah. use, um, yeah. depending what it is. So after I like connected with, we'll call her Zaki because she's got a long name which can't pronounce, can't spell or whatever. So we agreed on Zaki. Um, I then started looking into all the star seeds and the star beings and the. I have always had a fascination. I don't think I told you this story, right? When I was little, you know, a lot of people were scared of like um, that the ghost is going to get them or the boogeyman <laughs> and all that. I used to lay in bed and I used to listen to the sound. And it, it might have been a helicopter, don't know. It never used to sound like that to me, but I used to think it was a spaceship. <laughs> and I used to be worried that we're going to come and get me. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> me. So I was worried about ETs coming to get me when I was little. And I used to fear that noise. Yeah, now they can come and get me if they want. Don't, don't even bring me back. <laughs> I've, I've, had a, I've had a man come for healing. And he's got a whole story of being taken. Oh, yeah, fascinating. You've got to get that story. I'm sure yeah. everyone would like to hear it as well. But, yeah, I'm really into ETs and I, I studied all the beings as well. I sent him on to Donna. Donna might know. I'll get her to tell me the story. Because yeah. he was. I think he was too much for me. I didn't know how to end it. <laughs> 
And I think I was in between uh, when Charlie wasn't well and all that, and I said to Donald, you talk to him. But he uh, would, I've, I've heard from him lately, he wants to come back here and get on the bed. He like lying on there. So I'm sure there is a lot. Okay. It, I believe he told me stories, but he, he reckons he was taken as a child. Mm. But, uh, you know, I don't, mm, I'd have to ask. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they do. They do come down. I mean, I do watch quite a bit to do with ETs and things like that. Um, but yeah, that was always my fear that they were going to come and get me and take me. Um, I never scared of anything else as a kid. But I'm not scared now. But I, I've gone right into looking at the star seeds and um, looking at the star beings and stuff like that and seeing all the different types of reptilians, Edromanas and uh, Syrians and um, all, all the different types. I've got them all on my computer where I've done the research on them and all of that. Sometimes I do readings on them. I haven't put it up lately on my website. I took it off my other website. But, yeah, sometimes when I do my healing or whatever, it's, I can see that somebody was a star seed. Okay. And if it tricks their like imagination and they think, oh, yeah, that resonates, then they might message me and I'll do a reading. I'll find out what, what star seed and what planet they originate from and that type of That's thing. Because I mass I just find it fascinating. Oh. Really, really, I'm like obsessed, getting obsessed with it now. To be honest, <laughs> I get the yeah. other head on me. <laughs> when I talk to Lisa, because she, she about reading the Kashiks and doing all that stuff. Yeah, you know, this is the lady out in America. She just we have these sort of conversations. Yeah, and she said to me, I. You know, June, you don't have to read the Akashic, but you read the the Galactic Akashic. What yeah. the bloody hell's that? Anyway, apparently I've read it for her. I don't remember a thing about it at yeah. all. But oh, And she said, June, you've got to create oracle cards but with the Galactic. Really? Yeah, just think of all the weird, wonderful beings you can put on them. Yeah. <laughs> I think, oh, come on. Really? Anyway, whatever. Yeah, why not? It'll happen. Yeah. No, I think it's really great. I, I love it. Over there. Talk about encouragement. I mean, she just don't stop. But I I, I don't know what the glass... The, um, the I know them all. <laughs> Do you? Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been studying it for ages since I got Zaki and I tried to understand because she's Arturian um, and that when I started looking into my own stuff that's my lineage Arturian so obviously that's why I've got her so that's when I say like when you do you know who your galactic guide is I know like when I've done readings for you before and your immediate family they all seem to be Syrian Styrian star seeds, but that doesn't mean that you haven't been on other planets. You could have been on Arterius and you could have been on Adromina and you could have been in Atlantis or all different places, but that might be your last one would have been Syrian. So that'd be more prominent for you. So Syrians are healers, but they're also into other stuff as well. So my Arterians are just master healers. That's their thing. That's what they do. The Syrians do a little, so they all have different gifts and things that they can do. So you'll be given a guide to help you with the stuff that you were here to work with. Or maybe you might get a few, because sometimes we get a couple coming. Yeah. Well, no, I have to open the door. Yeah. There'll be not in here. So like, as we know, like we've got that star seed lineage go for our family, because we had Stuart here earlier. And then granddad to come in. So then when we asked that they're on that and you already did that information with Stuart saying he, he was on the Galactic Council. Um so so what star seed is he on that Galactic Council? Because they're not all angels up there. No, it's different Stuart, big things, aren't they? That's what Stuart, an ascended master. Oh, he right. was. Because he's um he was St. Bernadette. Right. You know the one who created Lords, the okay. healing sanctuary. That's it. That because that's where Mother Mary showed herself to St. Bernadette. That's what I've been given about Stuart forever. Okay. Because so, uh, 
So on the Galactic Council, well, there's loads of them, isn't there? Up on there. There's when I yeah. did one of those last meditations, when I did it all over COVID, and Stuart was in here, the, one of the last, very last ones, and he, he told me, you know, he was he's on the Galactic, I knew he was anyway, but this is what this is about tonight, for the meditation. And in, you know the Keepers of the Light Cards? Yeah, made me get them out and I had them all out and he was telling me which ones in the end there were so many I had them all stuck on the wall over there and mm. I thought oh it looks like I'm meditating with that lot tonight Yeah, and that, that that's what I thought well, Stuart running it but that was mm. those were all the people that are and they're mostly ascended masters that are on there Yeah, and, but they've got another name up there I've never asked. I've just assumed that yeah. they are ascending masters. Yeah. But for them, they're probably something higher than that now. Because the Galactic Council, I mean, when I, I do, I have seen another one on the council. Uh, it could have been Stuart dressed differently. I don't know. Mm. Um, they come in this very weird, like, uh, it looks looks like magnetic grey material. Now, it's not air text, but similar. But it's nothing like I've ever seen on earth ever. Uh, yeah. And it, the collar is up high, but it's just a flash of it. It's not. Mm. And I don't know if they if they've ever been humans. I don't know. Yeah, but, there are some beings that have never been. Aren't there? That's yeah. never been humans. Yeah, so I don't know too mm. much about it because when I I just go with the flow, really, you know what I'm like, right? Yeah. If I'm meant to know that bit, then I expect them to tell me. Or <laughs> that don't always work that way, though, does it? You have to ask. <laughs> I'm not, but perhaps because I'm that age and come from that era. Yeah. I just accept. You know, this is how it is at the minute. But I know that Stuart, I know he told me, and he did say, Mum, you've got to raise your vibration yeah. to work with me, because I'm off past, I li actually live out past Andromeda now. So mm. whether he lived out there before, I've got no idea. Yeah. But that's yeah. where he come from. Yeah. Well, they come back, because the, with the starseeds or the beings, they don't always um, experience feelings and emotions. So that's just a human experience. So yeah. when they choose to come here, that's what they feel down here. That's why there's a lot of star seeds walking about anyway, doing our type of work and find it really hard to do this work as well, because it's quite overwhelming, isn't it? It can, if you remember, but it's why we don't remember what we do half the time is because it's too much for us to keep remembering all that it stuff, is. experiences. So yeah. we have to learn to let it go um and yeah. even even a week yeah. later can't always remember it can you no people say to me do you remember that and i know no so, they was talking to someone else they weren't talking to me yeah but what i find which i because i'm a right softy i could cry i'll cry with everybody if they cry i'll cry yeah but when i'm doing that work and the, the first thing they do is walk through this door and they look at me and cry and i go it's okay this is what you're meant to do. Everybody cries. Everybody. And that I had one girl in here. She was here for four and a half hours. Don't tell me if she was here for four and a half hours. Yeah, and I know. She I cried think. for four and a half hours. Yeah. And but the, when I'm working, I don't cry with them. Mm. Like if I was me as June in there, and somebody come in the door crying, I cry with you. In here, when they cry, I just don't cry. I'll make them cry, I think. Yeah, come and give them the box of ankies. Keep crying. It's fine. <laughs> and I don't cry, I think. So mm, I do. I do. I did it this morning with my lady. I feel the emotion just hits me and then I'm off as well. So I hope they don't cry because it sets me off. Yeah. I can't. I can't do that. And I just think I just let it happen now because um I, it's just part of what I do. I just it is. I just accept it. You know, I'm going to feel the feels and the emotions that come with it. But I really do. I mean, I can switch it off doing the funerals. They're they're really emotional to do. Yeah. Go I mean, in, do that. Do that. I'd be in bits. 
Yeah. But if, before I started doing the funerals, I used to go to the services and I used to practice. I used to sit at the back of the crematorium. They must have all thought, what's this woman doing here again? And it was to like, get used to the feeling. But I never even knew any of them and I'd still be crying sitting at the back. So just the thought of going in there yeah. doing it. Um, so I just don't, but when I was doing the services, I'd be able to step from me mate when I did it, as I did bore my eyes out on that one. But generally speaking, I can do the services, they're all coming up, they're crying and whatever. But I think like what you do is you you separate the two, you get into a mode, don't you, where you think, if I don't do the crying because you'll make them worse, if they see you cry, you'll make them worse. So if I was to get up to the service and start crying, the whole place would be in bits, wouldn't it? Yeah, and so I, I think, think it's separating it, isn't it? Yeah, it is because yeah. why they they can always come and sit on the settee. They we always do cards and chat, and it all starts coming out and unwinding yeah. them. But what they don't realise is the minute they walk in here, they're all they're on them. Yeah, Even yeah. Them, yeah. Whether they're sitting on the chair or laying on the bed, and I I just think how wonderful because such a relief to get rid of all that stuff yeah and yeah. it's like holding the space for them to do that that's yes, what exactly. it is. and i suppose that's part of or even more better than just the healing yeah it's all part of it isn't it what you it do yeah. yeah it's so lovely because i get lovely messages or it, it isn't oh. all it isn't but we <laughs> We've got lots more stories about Dr. B. I mean, like, with you not, when they're crying and you not crying, did you do that in the beginning or yeah. have you learned to no, not do right it? Right from the beginning. Right from the beginning. I just, and I don't, because I don't know what that is because that just ain't me. Mm. I would fall apart with anybody else. But it's like, maybe it's because it's your professional act. And maybe they're supposed to cry and I'm not. Because if I lost control, mm. then maybe the healing won't be so good. Who know? I don't know. Yeah. And it's not because we're talking about it that I think, oh, that is so not like me to cry. Mm. But I don't, I don't get into that. I don't. Yeah, I, don't I, I, I do. Know. I do. Sometimes when I'm giving spirit message and it's re and the spirit is over, so like when I would be doing the service, say if the family wanted to talk to me and it's really upsetting and the spirit was upset as well because the family was upset and I'm now stuck in all this emotion that's going on, I do end up crying as well with it. And yeah. I just, oh God, it's exhausting. <laughs> I think that as well. Yeah, yeah. Not, I need to do it. Oh, I not so. Yeah. I've never thought about it before. Because, you know, like that lady that cried for four and a half hours, and my, a lot of them are still crying when they're on the bed because yeah. I'm feeling and all the tears are still coming. And, but it, it's mm. perhaps because I'm not, it's not me, it's never me, is it? How can it be me? I don't know this stuff. I don't know, you know, like it's when you channel the stuff or mm. you're that, right, it's not me in real life. I'm just doing mm. that lives in there. <laughs> yeah, funny now you say that, since um, I've had Saki and be doing it, if I'm doing more like the angelic or the shamanic type stuff, I seem to get all the motion with it. If it's like up on that, I'm so busy trying to sustain the energy of that, I don't yeah. think I do then. Yeah. So, yeah, you've probably been using the galactics all along where mine has not been all along. Mine's been yeah. about the last five years or something like that. And um, yeah, I noticed a difference with that, to be fair. But you know, when you're very empathic, if someone's like cries and then it makes me want to cry, it's terrible, really. Oh, it is. It's, well, what my, my stuff more is, I feel the pain. Yeah. More than the cross, but I, you know, whatever. When they lie on the bed, I know exactly. <laughs> Yeah, you've got the pain of where it is. Because they're giving it to me. And I, that's all I, you know, I'm not, I'm, I know I'm not here when I do that work. Yeah, different zone. <coughs> messages, I think, that's bloody clever. 
when I say to me, oh, do you remember you said that? I go, no, that was really clever of me to do that. <laughs> that ain't me. I don't know that stuff. <coughs> it's interesting, isn't it? Yeah, it's just like trying to remember it. You know, when we, we say that, what we talk about, but then we always find something to talk about because it's so got so many stories, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's the stories mostly have come out of like because you quoted it back to me, and yeah. the other stories people have actually written it to me. Yeah. So then you do remember it because mm. you can't. I can't fit all those bits back together. I don't know. Oh. <clears throat> they do tell me after they sold you this. You know, like it was a shock when you got that with your leg. And I do tell I do tell the girls that because you quoted it back to me and I mm. knew it then. But yeah. off my own back I'd have gone indoors and thought nothing of it. No. Uh, you just don't you just don't remember it, do you? It's that, that thing. So that when I do my sessions and I do it and I say to them, it's your job to write it down and remember. So when you come back to me you can tell me what we did last time. <laughs> what yeah. actually happened and jog me memory. Because yeah. that one all gets mingled in, doesn't it, of like the different yeah. sessions. Well, can you imagine it holding on to all that? You, mm. can't, you can't hold on to it. Yeah. I know, like, when I first started doing it, I used to think, oh, that poor woman or that poor man or that poor... And, like, really feel it and thinking, oh, my God, that's terrible. And that like, ponder over it and all that. I mean, I don't do that now. Obviously, I feel sorry for people and all of that. But I just think that I'm just here to do that job now. Just, yeah. like, move on. Don't, like, observe it, but don't take it on. That's which is... It. That's, that's what I had to learn to do that. Yeah. It's so much... I know that I'll... I'd be a wreck. Yeah. If I if I gave in to if that was my role to do that, I would be a wreck. And it wouldn't serve anybody. No. No. And as long as they walk out of here and they feel better and they've left all their whatever it is, they've left it in here for yeah. a bit. <laughs> but it's, I just find it all so fascinating. Yeah. And you know what I really, really does for me. Anybody that hasn't got, you know, spiritual stuff, spiritual life, or know mm. about this stuff, I f I do feel sorry for them because it just makes it makes life so interesting. Mm. I mean, even though you know, mine didn't come in a very nice way because of Stuart, but and and being a mum and losing a son, I mm. think. How would that be if I didn't believe in what I believe in? Mm. I'm sure part of that, of me being who I am, as might not easy, I'm never saying it's easy, but maybe I dealt with it a little bit better because I got this. Mm. You know? We still got the communication going, haven't you? You know, he still comes in, comes in to help you. He pops in to help me when I'm doing stuff. I must, he must be around Carl a lot, helping him out and you know, guiding him about a bit. So yeah, he's just he's just here in a different sense, isn't he? Now he's just not a physical body, but he's I, around. I bet he has a job with Carl, though, don't you? <laughs> Everybody has a job with him. <laughs> yeah, but you, you know, he's, he's just such a happy being, isn't he? This is the theme of Carl. He's such a lovely boy. Well, yeah. boy, he's a man, isn't he? He's a grown man now, but you just look at him. Man's face. You wouldn't <laughs> believe it, would you? He's 18 going on 50. Yeah, but he's just the. Uh, He's got the most amazing blue eyes, hasn't he? Yes. He's, he is. I've, I've, we've had this conversation. I think he just come back as this lovely being to just wander around, do whatever he wants to do, go where he wants to go and not have any attachment to anything or any possessions or money or nothing, has he? He's like nothing. how we would nothing. all like to be, really, in the world, and it, have all that. That is how we're supposed to be. Yeah. You've got him as yours. It's not, it ain't, it ain't easy because he don't follow any rule book. There is no rule book with him. He <laughs> He don't own the shirt on his back. Nothing. Yeah. It's just a bleeding wanderer. Yeah. He <laughs> gets by in his little life, doesn't he? Whatever he's doing. Yeah. He just, he wouldn't have a thought about tomorrow. Mm. 
and that's the, the moment and the day which we would yeah. like to do if all he's this. got 50 quid in his pocket that's for today and tomorrow what, well what do you do tomorrow well after i i ask you or <laughs> oh bless him you know he just uh, no, he has not got one iota of knowing about any of it no and who, who the bleak now he is i'd love to know because he's just ain't in this he ain't in this reality is he yeah. Oh, that's, we create our own reality, remember? Yeah, yeah, we do. And he's really yeah. created his. Yeah. The first, I was saying, because obviously he rings up and it's always for money and whatever. Anyway, I, was, I had this conversation with Charlie the other day. I said, you know what, right from day, right from a, a little, little tiny tot, he was like this. And, and I know. Everybody says that their kids were different and all that. I know that. But but even the first day at school, I took him to school. And that's the days when I used to do the catering. And we was going to meet this lady about a wedding. So luckily I'd said to Jeannie, who I did the catering with, meet me at 10 o'clock. Come to my house and meet me. At about half past nine, the door's gone. I've gone to the door, Carl. It's first day at school, he's standing on the doorstep, I passed nine. I said, God, and it was main road to cross. He said, oh, I, they've told me they don't need me today. I've come up. They don't need me. And I've looked, you know how long that street was? Where I lived? I've yeah. looked, of course, I've put, come on, you're going back. And I've looked down the road. The, we used to have welfare ladies in them days. The welfare lady had her coat on. Or she couldn't get a breath. She's a coat's all flapping. Can you imagine? He told the teacher he'd gone. He wanted the toilet, and he come on. <laughs> Love they it. They run. <laughs> so you had no hope of mainly uh, no. taking him then, did you? From day oh, one. Yes, <laughs> I'll play longer, and I wouldn't have been there. Yeah, he would have been sitting on the doorstep, wouldn't he, for all day long? Well, till they come and got him anyway. <laughs> Before that, because he used to have that little thing, he used to make a noise, a little push lock thing, and he took it out the street, and I could hear him, and then all of a sudden it stopped, and I'm out the street. He was about, he couldn't have been at school then, and we had a park behind the houses opposite. He was over the park with the big boys. <laughs> took the thing over there, his thing you drag along, and he's gone over the park. You know when you, you think, this is it, someone's got him. Yeah. Mind you, good luck to them if they've got him. <laughs> oh, he's an angel, really. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about well, like... You yeah. can say that. <laughs> yeah, I can say that. But he's creating his reality, isn't he, that he wants to live in. That's his world, how he, he functions in it and how he, he yeah. wants to be. Yeah, I've been um, watching some stuff. Well, I'm always watching different stuff um, on YouTube and things like that. But they say about how we create our own reality and we live in a simulation and um, changing your thoughts and your vibration and things like that can change yeah. your reality and stuff like that. That's true. It's absolutely true. Mm -hmm. oh, and that's another story. When I went on and spoke to Dr. When yeah, we have got to say that. Yeah, well, should we give him a little snippet? Like, James has a near death experience. And, I've had two. Uh, oh, just said two. And, um, well, one one was more when you spoke to all the, the people, weren't it? Um, yeah, the nurse. Einstein. Oh, and this was the second one, Einstein. That was the second one, Einstein, and all that. And uh, we got to find out if Einstein was part of our family line, you know, because. As I said to you before, every time like, I see a picture of him, it makes me smile as if I know him. You know what? It's, it reminds me of looking at your dad with that mad dad. Yeah, I mean, it's got it's familiar, isn't it? The face is familiar. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, out of all those faces in that room, it was him that spoke to me. And he mm. talked to me about vibration. Yeah. And, I, I mean, I didn't stay at school, so I don't know about all this stuff. I had to. I was talking to somebody else. I said, "Can because I know he he was 
famous for something, wasn't he? He was really famous. Yes. But he had certain words, and I said, I need to know what that is. Because <laughs> bloody hell talking to me about vibration. Anyway, we create when I was working more doing the retreats, the first mm -hmm. retreat was all about vibration. Yeah. The vibration of everything, and it was him. Mm. It, well, remember when I was at yours on that time when I come over, we, we was what we just been talking about the healing and that. In that evening, we were talking about color therapy. Do you remember this conversation? I, I thought, oh, and yeah. we pulled in Einstein. We were talking to Einstein, and he was telling us about the little color lights and how we should do it. And then yeah. Charlie was googling it. Yes, <laughs> I remember that now. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. Einstein we called in and he was telling us all about it how we were going to do the light therapy and stuff i must have had that net i must have had that done by then this yeah and way before and it was this when i went on and he was in that room talking to me yeah <laughs> he said in the class <laughs> <laughs> oh great <laughs> oh if that's a double whammy then yeah about the color yeah. Yeah. Oh, how interesting. Yeah, I think when we're doing our stuff and we're sitting there talking, poor Charlie's in the background listening to all this. It's like, I said, what are those two going on about now? Now they've got Pete Einstein in the room, they're talking to him. <laughs> and it is true, though, when you see yeah. this face, it is like familiar, isn't it? You know, yeah, like you know. Yeah, yeah, I feel like I know him. Every time I see him when he comes up, I've even seen pictures of him when he was younger and he still looks familiar because the yeah. most common one is the white sort of hair, isn't it? Yeah. And that's how people yeah. know him. But when he was a lot younger and he had dark hair, that picture is still familiar. I swear that he, he is in our family line somewhere going it's back now. Yeah, because yeah. honestly, I stood on that plinth and there was a lot of faces and... I mean, why was I staying on a plinth? Anyway, he was the first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he was talking to me about, I mean, and I, I, I'm not, I haven't got a good memory, but I remembered, I don't remember what he was saying, but I knew it was about the vibration of everything. Yeah. I knew that. Whatever that was, because <laughs> they couldn't get me back, because I was obviously busy talking to him. Yeah, having a little chat. Yeah, how was that? The bleeding panic when I got back, when they got me back in that room, I thought, oh my God, they're all panicking. Yeah, but there's quite a few of them there, wasn't there? It wasn't just Einstein, you had a few. Oh, people. Was a few. Yeah. yeah. I don't know who the others were, actually. I can't remember. Mm. He was the first one. And I was standing on this thing, looking at him. Like, mm. I was on the plinth. I don't know what that was about. But uh, fascinating, isn't it? Mm. And when you say, you know, he does make you think he's familiar, that is the truth. Yeah, it does. Definitely to me, if it was familiar. Yeah, because uh, there's that part of our lineage that we don't know about. Yeah, and that the look that we sort of have, that's more your mum's side, isn't it? That's yeah, more that look. Yeah. He looks similar. Well, if you, do you remember Grandad's uh, sister? No. Uh, see, no. I look like, I do look like her, really. I don't oh, know. Yeah. So there's that, you know, that her and my mum, I, I am sort of a mixture of them. Right. So that's probably who you are, a mixture of them two. I'll yeah. have to show you Dom's photo. Yeah, you have to show me the picture. Yeah, definitely. Because I thought you would have met, you knew her when you was tiny. Maybe, I, I did obviously meet him when I was little, baby or something, but yeah, yeah no. Yeah, I like looking at the old photographs as well, of the, you know, of the old, yeah. um, well, people, we didn't really meet many of them, because Grandad died quite young, and I don't know, we didn't yeah. probably see so many of them after that. Yeah, well, none through lots <clears> of <throat> the way. I don't think she kept anything after that. Mm. Oh, so that the lineage could be on granddad's side then not oh, necessarily yeah, on nan's yeah but see, like i think there must be stuff in nan's side because nan was really like your mum my nan was really into the spiritual stuff she used to go fortune tellers and all that i used to yeah. read tarot cards for nan 
Oh, did you? Yeah, because yeah. Jess bought me my first pack of cards. Um, I don't know whether the wiser or wherever, but when Nan used to come over and see me, um, we used to pick her up and bring her over for Sunday and stuff, I used to do the cards with her and Jess. So oh. I used to do them on Nan years ago, and I knew she loved it. She always used to laugh. She used to make yeah. something up, mind me, just to wind her up. <laughs> <laughs> She loved it though. She loved anything to do with the psychic world. Yeah, she loved it all. And I think I got told actually at some point that it came that it some of it come from her side. I'm Mm. sure. Yeah, so I've done asked on the family. So I got um on your your side, like granddad, and I feel Nan, but I didn't like check in properly with Nan. I just assumed because she's always been interested in it. And then, so that's my dad's side. And then I did my mum's side. My mum's side is really hard to track back. But from what I did get from connecting to my Nan when she does come through, um, was that there was Romany Gypsy in there. And it was down that line. So I think like the tarot psychic bit I got from that side and the mediumship yeah. healing bit I got from your side. Yeah. I feel like I got double whammy, but I don't know about mum's dad, whether he did. So there's certain family members I didn't check in with because obviously my other granddad died when I was like six months old. So I didn't know him anyway. Um, even though he's come through on boards and stuff like that. So I know he comes around when I've done board work, he's come in for me. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, I did this board, right, when I lived out in the middle of nowhere once. I had this big bungalow with loads of grounds around it. I was going to turn it into a spiritual centre. Everyone come, used to go outside. There was all out in the trees and the grass and there used to be beehives. And it was lovely, it was really lovely. But it's pitch black of a night and I used to live there on my own at one point. And everyone used to go to me, how can you just live there on your own? I thought, oh, well, I'm fine. But I used to do spiritual stuff from there and people used to come and sometimes I'd do board work. Um, most of the time I would do board work for people that had lost someone tragically, if there's been a murder, suicide, or like missing person, that type of thing. Not very rarely did I do it just for like a family session, but I have I've done it for that. But I was doing it for this family one night. They'd all come over to do stuff. And um, when I was doing it, it kept coming to me. I was like, you can't come to me. It's not about me. And uh, then I said to him, like, it keeps coming to me. I'm going to have to ask the questions. So then like, I said, like, who is it? And then I got my mum's dad. And then funny enough, I got Roy's dad as well, because his name was Cecil, and that's the only Cecil I ever knew. Yeah. And he come through, and both of them went, get rid of him now, like that. And that was a fella I was seeing at the time, and it was started going a bit Pete Tong, and I was just thinking, well, I might need to get out of this situation. And they both went, get out of it, uh, get rid of him now. So I took the message there, but people didn't know what the message was all about, but I knew what it was. So I said, oh, thank you for coming in. And that wasn't, Granddad Joe didn't come in at all that time. It was my mum's dad and, uh, like, Jess's dad's yeah. coming, uh, dad's dad coming. So, like, them two was really, like, didn't expect them to two to pop up. Anyway, I did the session, whatever. And then, like, later that night, did the phone call. We're done. Don't want to see you again. And I went back to my mum and I went, you're never going to guess who came through last night. So I told her and she went, and what did you do? I said, well, it's done. <laughs> so I actually ended a relationship on the fact that I did a board session. And wow. they both come through and get rid of him now. That's how I did. Wow. Yeah. It's amazing what comes out in those sessions as well. Yeah. Actually, I've done one, like, yeah. Oh, yeah, you'll love it. It's really, like, quite calming. I, I did um, a family uh, December time. They chose to have it done, and um, we did it in there. And there was a well, there's a few things that went on, but one of the stories in there, if I don't mention names, it'd be fine. Um, one of the ladies in there, dad was murdered, and it was fairly recent. Oh, wow. And that murder the new wife maybe or stepmom whatever had got all the money and got everything and it's all a bit suspicious so the dad came in 
Um, she was obviously not saying as much as she should have done because there was other people there. But I said, I know there's more because he's telling me you're not asking all the questions and everything. But then when everyone left, she said to me, yeah, though, I've got more questions, told me a bit of gist of the situation. So I said, OK, right, I'll leave it with you. You know, you know where I am. And then I saw somebody else <clears throat> who had I had saw the lady that held the session and she come back and said that the um, the lady in question has now gone to a solicitor to try and sort it out because obviously the woman in question, maybe the stepmum or new wife or whatever, um, had taken everything and the kids got nothing. So she was now looking into it. So I said, she said to me she wanted to come back and do another session to connect with her dad. I said, well, you, you can if you want, it's up to you, I'll leave it with you. But yeah, it's quite amazing, like some of the stuff that comes That's out. Interesting. Doing that board work stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, do it with me, I've never done it. Yeah, um, yeah, you're in when with granddad and your brother and your dad years ago. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm talking a lot of years. Granddad's been gone 50, 55 years now. Yeah, because Darren would be 55. So, yeah, yeah. so yeah. it was a lot of years ago. Oh, my mum and dad's done it a few times with me. Yeah, yeah. they like it, they like it. A few my lot have um, done it and enjoyed yeah, it. Been, yeah, so yeah, it's really good. It. Yeah, it's good for like past lives as well. I do the angel board for that and go in and do the past life stuff on there. And also like connecting to your guides where you've known them before in other lifetimes, what their names are, what they look like and all of that. Of course, Dave, my guide, comes in. He likes a little bit of a mess about and a laugh. He always shows up and gets everyone laughing and chilled. You know, oh, he makes, makes me laugh. Yeah, I know, all the names, eh? <laughs> yeah, that's a story there. Because, you know, like, I've been married to Dave in the two lifetimes previously, yeah. so we're quite familiar in this lifetime. Yeah, and he comes in and out and helps me with stuff. Been a bit redundant lately, to be fair, with all these galactic beings coming in. <laughs> <laughs> you might be the wrong answer. <laughs> But you'll love it. So when we do like that, the angel stuff and all that, we'll have to see the angel balls. You'll love it. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to. Yeah, yeah, it's really fascinating. Oh, we've got so much up our sleeves. So <laughs> pull it all out like magic. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's good, isn't it, to do all different yeah. things? It keeps it interesting. Yeah. Keeps it exciting, doing all stuff. It does. So what have you got lined up next? So you said you've been doing the Akashic. So you're talking about doing um, workshops and stuff, aren't you, with the Akashic yeah. stuff I'm in the do the clearing with that. Yeah. That's good. Um, the morning, well, that with Laurie, I'm going to do. Mm. That'll be the end of April. Right. I'm going up there. She's organising a, um, a, a... She's doing it in a village hall, I think. She's been today to look at it. Yeah. Into um manifesto, that stuff. Yeah, all that, yeah. RFC, whatever that was, the dream builder. Yeah. She's done all so it'll be a good combination mm -hmm. because I'll do the clearing and she can then talk them through do like, the manifesto and stuff. Manif yeah. Well that'd be good. Yeah. So that, okay. there's only that on the cards at the minute. I mean yes. I'm always busy in here really. Yeah. If I want to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, um, are we going to start doing the healing circle together now, then? Yeah. You up for that? Yeah. yeah, good. Okay, so I'll go out on here, then, if anybody's okay. interested in doing that. So we will start that in April as well. Um, we're going to do a little video, a little post or something about it, aren't we, that we'll yeah. put out on the social okay. medias as well yeah. yeah we will be starting doing it and we'll probably be channeling the galactics through that one won't we he's not going to be normal guides or maybe we might be the angelic realm in some of the archangels or something because you work with them as well don't I'll you the archangels. yeah Metatron, yeah mainly which one metatron metatron yeah i've worked with him before but they're not look they're not my go-to's really i tend to do more my my like shamanic stuff and that that comes yeah. in there. and they're different and that's different different yeah and then um obviously with the galactics i've been working with them with my stuff now so i mean i know the angels do come in for some stuff but they're not like my go-to like they are your go-to yeah people. totally i mean i'll 
I walk through the door and I fucking feel them. Mm -hmm. And I know who that, who's here to do yeah. the work. So yeah. meditation, it's normally Metatron now. Normally. Okay, yeah. That's interesting because we can work when we do stuff together, then we can mix it up with our own yes. different right. stuff, can't we? And that'll keep it like interesting for people that join in and do our stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we're like, we've been on here like over an hour now, so it's probably okay. time to get off and yeah. uh, we'll come back here again next yeah. week and, and fill you in with another set of stories and things so that we've got more yet. Yeah, I've got a lot more to share with you yet. So thank you, everyone, if you stayed with us again this long. And thank you to everyone that's left a message. We really appreciate it. And anyone that's liked and followed our channel. Yeah. Uh, right. really love it. Thank Thanks again, everyone. Great. See you again soon. See you soon. More stories. Bye.